these shorts already. Hi guys, welcome back to Lotment Diggers. What a cup? Why? Well, it's been a it's been a bit. It's been a it's been nearly a week and a half since I put the last video up. Uh, I've been having a lot of issues with my car. I've managed to resolve them. I think at the touch would have resolved them. Um, but I've been dealing with that. I've been actually doing a, a, a few videos on the allotment as well, so uh, you're not going to miss anything. Um, we're going to show you now what we've been up to. Um, yeah, the car broke down. I was heading up to Warrington Car Boot about a week and a half ago, and um, it started playing up. I, I got there. To, I went there to to meet a coin dealer. I picked some coins up and uh, gets back in the car. Uh, go to drive it. it. Starts up all right, but when I come to pull away, there was no no um, power. I thought, oh my god, it's the turbo. You know, the first thing you think, no power, it's still working. Anyway, turned it back off, turned it back on, it started okay. So we managed to get back down here, down the 62, back down to Salford. Next day, I took it up to my mate's garage. I said, can you have a look at this? He said, oh, Matt, says, I'm, we're not going to be doing that for a week. I said, well, what's up, mate? He says, you look a bit miserable. He says, yeah, I'm burying my brother tomorrow. I went, oh my god. I said, I'll tell you what. Forget about it. Um, let me know when you when you, you know you can you've got the time. And um, anyway, uh, a few days later he rung me back and he says I can get you. I've got you here now. If you want me to bring your car in, um, bring it in on Tuesday, and uh, we'll see what what I can do for you. Anyway, I brought it in. He uh, got his diagnostic on it, tested it. So they you know he took the the turbo off looks like that. I said everything's right on your turbo. So it says, however, I said it's, there's a sensor here what's saying minus 30. It says clearly it's 30 degrees at the moment. It said it should be reading 30. So I don't know why it's doing it. I said, but on closer inspection, it's sort of like you've got a broken sensor here. So anyway, it replaced the sensor. He says, I'm not going to spend. I'm not going to do anything else. Drive it and see what happens. He said because. I could, you could throw a fortune at it and it could be a, just a loose wire. Anyway, um, I said, what do I owe you? I said, what it cost me, what it cost the, for the part, mate? He said, 30 quid, that's it. And uh, so he did all that. He did, uh, he did the, you know, the diagnostic. I mean, that, they, they, they charge 50 quid just for that these days. But uh, mate's rates, um, it's, it's, good to, it's good to know... Um, all my friends are, are, are worth knowing, basically. Um, what comes around goes around. He'll want me to do with something for him, and I, you know, I, you know, I'd do it. But yeah, it cost me thirty quid, and it seems to be working right. Uh, yeah, I couldn't believe it. Part the bloody coins. Gets in the car. Buff. We've got enough time at the end of the video. I might show you the coins. What I got? I didn't get many. We've got a Jack the Ripper. Um, show you what that is at the. And uh, we got some very beautiful coins as well old coins um, half crowns so anyway that all being said um, let's get on with the video now I've been taking a few little clips of um, all my flowers that have been flying around the, the, the plot over the last week uh, with this sun I mean it's like 82 83 at the moment it's absolutely sweltering I'm under a brolly that's what this is it's a bloody brolly shady me and buttercup as you see she sparked out at nines there which reminds me I've got a Flea her and um, I've got some flea, flea, flea drops in the car. I was talking to a couple of the girls and they says um, they were talking says um, apparently feral cats, wild cats, which she well she isn't, but she is if you know what I mean. She's an allotment cat. She doesn't belong to anyone. Well, she does. She belongs to me and everybody on the allotment. We've adopted her. So they was telling me that a normal house cat would be treated every once every three months. However, with with her, with her being a, a wild cat, really should do her once every month. So um, it's been three months since I last did her. So we're going to get her tomorrow. When she's like this, I just drop on her neck and drop on, drop on her bum, and she'll be sorted. Anyway, like I say, back to the video. Um, yeah, we, we 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 took a load of little videos, short clips of um, all the flowers. So I did put added a bit of music to him and. I'm just going to quickly show you. Some of them are still here, and some of them have, have died back with this weather. But the weather's been—it's um, been really, really hot, and uh, I thought it would be wise to to record them while we still can. <laughs>
some awesome flowers there there's a lot of tons of flowers still to come up um, they're just just starting to come up now so um, later on in the the month um, start of um, August um, we'll, we'll start to see some beautiful flowers here anyway um, yeah we've we've been busy we've t just took the rest of the um, elephant garlic up now i'm going to show you this garlic it's a, it's really good stuff as well um good it's going to make good seed garlic for next year let me show well, you as you can see this is uh, more elephant garlic in front of me and um, my potatoes have fallen down here onto the garlic and over the path they're doing no harm um, but i'm not going to touch them um, but what i'm going to do is concentrate on these i'm going to I've already took the scapes off the top of them and uh, they've all been chopped up and put into freezer bags and they're in the freezer. However, uh, what I'm going to do is cut the tops off these, cut them down to about six inches, then we're going to dig them all out. And uh, I've, like I said, I've got my wheelbarrow just here to throw all the bits in. There's Buttercup. She's never more than uh, six foot away from me. Uh, I've got a few, they've got the girls there been watching what we're doing. But uh, what we're going to do is get stuck into them. So I've got myself my little fork here to dig them out. There's my fork. So I'll just go in at the side, go in deep, and then lift them up. And uh, see if we get anything. And as you can see, oops, sorry. That is uh, one awesome um, elephant garlic. Uh, what I'm going to do is just cut them back off here, so they're about yay big, and uh, we're going to take all the tops off like that now, so that's what I'm going to do, take all the tops off, and then we'll dig some out and see what they look like, but uh, if we're going off this one here, um, that's not too bad, good roots. Uh, no no sign of rot or anything so we just caught these in time I'll say all the tops are get put into a bag here and they just get rotted down and then we'll throw them in the compost bin when we're ready so anyway excuse the squawking we'll come back to them in a minute anyway I said we're gonna take all the tops off and we'll lift a few up and see what we got but um, there's a nice green van playing in the background so I said I'm not gonna leave the recording going on if that happens we're just gonna phase in and out but I'll show you show me doing a little bit more lifting them up and uh, then what we'll do is we'll go into finishing them all off so let's have at it put the keys where I can find them yep yeah. well and truly split they're awesome then so I'm going to continue
Well, as you can see, we've only lifted, what well, we've lifted 12 and they're all good sizes. So, yeah, I'm just going to continue taking the tops off. So we'll come straight back, guys. So there we go. There's the bed all tidied. Uh, I will be putting some, probably some brassicas in here. I'll have to sort my nets out though, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but we wait with baited breath on that um, front. I'll probably lift my onions out before I put the brassicas in, which are, are in, the, in the other bed. In fact, I'm going to be using some bottles that I've got in there, just to lift the, the nets off the, uh, the brassicas, but we'll come back to that. What I'm going to do now is give these a wash and uh, we'll have a look what we've got. So I'm off to give them a good cleaning and we'll be right There's back. There's my elephant garlic, last off. Uh, just cleaned it all, put it back into this. This is going in the back greenhouse just to dry out a bit. There's buttercup, keeping out the way. Um, like I said, this is the last of the, the garlic for now. Um, once it's dried out, I pick all my clothes that I'm going to be using and um, for my seed and the rest of it will go home. Yeah, we've had about, what you see there is probably, we've had about three times, well, twice as much more we've taken home, so that's probably a third of what we've had so far this year from the, from the garlic, uh, elephant garlic that is, so there's a the result. Well, I say these here, I don't know if you can see them, they're goes, just going to go straight into stir fries then, but uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, some nice garlic there, really nice garlic, size of my hands, my hands are like shovels by the way, so you know. Right, anyway, onwards and upwards. So we've got that drying up in the in the back greenhouse, um, I will be splitting it shortly and we'll, we'll pick the biggest cloves for next year and, and we'll try and get them in in the end of October, November, that's when I like to put my garlic in, so we get a really, really cold frost, we really need cold weather. Um, it was quite mild, even though it was cold this year, it was, it was quite mild. Fortunately for her, it was quite mild as well. But uh, yeah, we still did all right with the, the garlic. Um, now, do you remember that, them planters that was showing you? I went over and picked up the smaller one for myself. Uh, the others are going to be put around the allotment. When we get, we'll get to doing that shortly, I'll show you where we're putting them. And, um, but I, I brought one over, uh, it was a 10 foot planter and it needed a little bit of alteration uh, obviously it needed some membrane inside the, the box to stop it from rotting and uh, it needed a lick of paint not that it wasn't already pressure treated the wood has been, um, been pressure treated with uh, whatever preserver but we give it a double dose of that and um, we had some drug dealers drop a load of um, wacky backer compost on the front of the allotments if you remember um, and I collected it and you, sh you see me put it at the back of the plot well we're going to bring it from the back of the plot and we're going to put it into this planter which is behind me so I'm going to show you all that now and um, yeah we, we've been busy bee with this one so this is the, the new planter um, what I'm going to do is take them uprights and cut them back cut the you know cut them flush uh, look silly the way they are but uh, you see them just sticking up but protruding above the top of the um, well as it is now is going to be my planter like I say I've got some um, waterproofing to do on it yet yeah? got this roll of uh, stuff what you use on damp courses bricks between the bricks for your damp course when you when you build an house you put a like a damp course down well I've got this um, it's a roll of tape and uh, we're gonna we're gonna do that here and um, I don't really need to drill holes in the bottom because there's a big holes all the way along there so I'm just like I say it's got drainage I could drain holes in it if I wanted to but I think what we're going to do tomorrow is chop the ends off and we'll, we'll clad it all up uh, with the and it's and it's a lick of paint. But I think before we start faffing about painting, once we start painting that, we'll start doing the furniture in the shed. So this is going to take a long time to do. 
But then again, I've still got my greenhouse to sort out as well, so... Um, for horses for courses. But this is a project that I can get on with eventually. And um, I'm going to be putting more strawberries into here. So we just took them blocks off and uh, as you can see it tidies up the box. Well guys I'm going to give this a look of paint, yep. uh, hopefully buttercup will keep out the way. She's heading off over there so hopefully she'll stay over there somewhere hunting and uh, it gave me a chance to, to paint this. So I've got my brush, got me my um my paint, that's how that's it. Well guys, as you can see, we give it a lick of paint. Now, it's already got, um, it's already been dipped and uh, pressure treated. All I've done is just added a bit more colour to it, made it red. Uh, what I've got to do now is clad it on the inside with some um, damp proofing. Then we can sort it out, get it in the bed, get the compost into it and uh, be ready to go. I've just got to keep my eye on Buttercup. So I'll see you in a bit guys. Ah, ah, get out of that bloody bucket. The um, membrane, waterproof membrane that I'm going to be using. I've got a roll of that and I've got a bigger roll for the base. Um, if you notice I've got it around the insides of the greenhouses here. It's just to protect the, the wood um, from the, the soil and it just preserves them a lot longer. So that's what we're going to be doing. There's my staple gun. I've got some scissors. We're going to have at it in a bit. But uh, I just thought I'd show you what we what we got. This is twice the size. I'm going to use this for the the bottom. Uh, obviously, we'll put some holes in it before we um, we'll drill some holes through the the base. This is basically just to stop everything from rotting quickly. With uh, it's pressure treated wood. Um, we've also give it a lick of um, a mixture of coupon oil and um, this red cedar, what you get from Wilco, so it's had that as well. It's going to get these and this, uh, so it should be should be okay for a while. There's Buttercup, she's uh, whacked out, this weather's absolutely horrendous. 
temperature is uh, twenty about twenty four degrees at the moment. It's absolutely smoking. Got all my greenhouses doors open. One down there as well. Anyway, we'll come back to this in a minute. I'm gonna have a cup of coffee before I do anything else. So I'll see you in a bit. This is the um, the lining that I'm gonna put in this box. We've got that for the base. It's a bit short, but what we'll do, we'll we'll put a bit, a couple of strips down the end. We're gonna be drilling holes in it anyway. And then we got this other stuff for the sides. So um, that's me me plan for today. Is to roll this down here, cut it, and then put the the stuff around the that roll there around the edges, and uh, it'll look pretty good. What do you say, Buttercup? She keeps out of the way. It will look pretty good, but uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm just gonna cut this um, the 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 centre bit to size, and then we can have at it. Um, staple it down and uh, it should protect some most of the wood anyway we're not going to protect, yet, protect everything but you know get a few years out of this plant I'll be happy but it's a it's a big one Me to run out of the bloody yeah these are the the staples you just put in there like that and that just locks up and away we go again. So, pull that side.
so here we go guys this is the box it's all been clad now in the um the damp coarse plastic we've done the edges we've done everything it was a it was a bit of a gap so what we've done we've done the we put a couple of strips around the the edges here as well so it's completely covered all it needs now is the soil putting in i will be down the center i will split it down the center to let the water drain out of it um, because if you flip this board over it's like two pieces of wood and there's a gap a, fa a gap between them so if i put a split down the center in certain places the water can drain through there i'm not too bothered if it rots the bottom the very bottom but uh yeah jobs are good instead of liquor um paint it's uh had the preserver put on it it's uh in pressure treated wood I will give it another lick of paint eventually. And buttercup in the shade there, it's just too hot. Don't know what the temperature is. Uh, hang on. Um, just trying to find the temperature. 23, bloody hell. 23 degrees. 24 degrees. Right, anyway. I'll come back when I've got this into the bed here and then we can start putting compost in it, I think. That'll be the next trick. Well, as you can see there, I've got a couple of little paving stones, three paving stones there, and that's what this um, plant is going to sit on. It's uh, the 400. Fortunately, this is over. This is 400 as well, this. this um, so they're going to sit perfect. The trouble is, I'm a bit disappointed really, I had 10 of these and someone's pinched all of them and luckily I've managed to find three um, on my plot of these um, paving stones. I've got, well actually, I've got all different types of paving stones, 3x2s, 2x2s, all different sizes and um, yeah, someone's borrowed the, the other 10 of these so I'm fortunate just to find these three but uh, we found them so what I'm going to do is uh, put them in the bed there and I can just put this planter straight on the top and uh, you know, be supported uh, kept off the floor so it can't get wet underneath and uh, we'll be good to go but yeah really really annoyed I did have another 10 of them and I say they've well, walked they do need a little bit of tweaking but that's the centre. These centres of these um, these lats here are the centres of them paving stones. So all I've got to do now is lift it on there, and I can't find anyone on here to do it with, unfortunately. But hey ho, someone will turn up in a bit, and uh, we'll have at so it. There we go. We've got the planter in. It nearly killed me doing it on my own, but it's in. All I've got to do now is. Um, piling the uh, the compost now we got a load of free compost early in the year um, some druggies left a load of bags of compost at the main gate and i brought it in and uh, since since i brought it in it's been in a bag down there so we've got to shuttle it from down there all the way up to here and in here and uh, we're going to top it right to the very top so that that's the job i'm going to be doing in a bit from buttercup she's absolutely at it this weather's uh, it's slowing her down. It's not only slowing her down, it's slowing me down as well. I mean, it's mid 70s today. It's just too hot for me. I'm gonna have a cup of coffee anyway before we start filling this up, but that's the next job, filling the filling the planter up. Um, so we'll be right back after, when, when, we've, um, when we start doing that. I'll show me doing a bit of it. Remember this stuff, guys. Got a lot of these clay um, balls in it. Well, that's what we're going to be putting into that planter. I've got a couple of 30 litre buckets here, so what I'm going to do is top these up. It's easy to to tip these into the um, raised bed at the the other up there. Um, so that's what we're going to do. But uh, yeah, I've got to shovel it in. Uh, it's going to get messy, but uh, it's got to be done. That should be enough to to fill the. Uh, the the plants are up anyway that's all free compost that uh, thank you smackheads for dropping it off at the front of the allotments 
appreciated. <laughs> right, anyway, let's get shoveling. By the way, this is perfect because it's uh, perfect for drainage as well. So anyway, we've got to get it up there. So see it up there. Well that's first of many, probably going to take about six more bucket loads, so let's go and get some more. Well, another two buckets. I've got one more bucket that should take it to 270 litres I bet I could get another bucket in there but like I say we don't know we'll let it settle down but all that clay them clay balls will give good drainage in that we'll do Maggie there going in the greenhouse pinching buttercups food it's just on the chair there unbelievable don't know if you're picking her up there she is on the shed unbelievable anyway we're concentrating on this forget the magpie like I say last bucket I've got my brush to brush it off level. Uh, right, let's have at it. Mm 
as you see all the way let's top right to the very top um, that will drop down by about an inch and then we'll cap it with some compost um, later in the year I might stick a few flowers in I don't know it's screaming put something in there isn't it but um, at the moment I'm just happy to get it into the bed we got it on them 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 paving stones so it's lifted up off the floor anyway we'll come back to this shortly believe it or not I got more paint on me than I got on that bloody planter <laughs> but um, at the end of the day uh, we've um, oh, I heard someone then at the end of the day we've got a new planter we've got um, un I think it's 170 litres of compost in there um, if I'm not right if I'm, I've rang on 37 Hang on, 7.30, Oh god, my head's gone. Um, 7.30 litre buckets. Come on, what, what's... Is it seven? No, it was... Oh, no, no, it was It was nine. Um, I think it was nine. I, I think it was 270 litres uh, of um, compost what we put into that, uh, that planter. And it was all free. Thanks for the, the druggies for dropping it off. And um, yeah, it's definitely going to have plenty of drainage in it. So I've just got to think of something what I'm going to put in there, which is going to um, it's going to benefit the the allotment. Might put some flowers in, but I, I think it's going to be strawberries. I think that's what we made it for anyway. But hey, we got a new new raised bed, and uh, it looks pretty awesome. And I've got another, I've got some more of that wood. Um, I got the lids off these twenty footers, so I might make another one of these boxes as well. It's dead easy to knock together, and maybe when it's a bit cooler later on in the year, I'll show you me making one of them. But um, yeah, we've uh, we got some fit for nothing there. Um, also, been taking some onions up, and um, we took some stir on and some sensorium. I think I did say stuck gas a lot along the way in the video, but uh, no, the stir on and. Um, Sensorian, that's a thing then. Uh, so let me show you these onions and uh, the, the way to to tell when your onions is ready is about well, guys. Show you now. Oh god, this kneeling down here with oh, I've only got shorts on. Ooh, I don't like kneeling on this um, wood chip. But uh, anyway, what we're doing, we're lifting these onions up and uh, okay. Give them a tickle there, Let's have a look at the roots, see what the roots are like. No no disease on the roots, that's what I always check. Nice onion. Um, you can tell when they're ready, they fall over. Look at them beautiful little onions, see that how it falls like that. And uh, like I say, we're just going to stick them all in here. And uh, let them dry out. I put them in my greenhouse, they'll soon be drying out within 24 hours and then what we'll do then um, we'll put them in, we'll take some home and put some in the shed, we'll tie them up as well but yeah, not bad onions at all then, really really healthy roots, everything's perfect like I say, you could just peel the skins back but it's, I don't see the point, no point in doing that you, all you're doing is um, wasting the onion but yeah, they clean up really nice then. Like I say, good roots, that's what you want. Alright, anyway. Uh, hope I've got enough space in this thing to put all these lot in. <laughs> I doubt it. But we're going to have at it anyway. Cleared the bed. We've got a bucket of onions. And another load here, just here. And... Uh, They don't look too bad, there's no disease at all on them, really clean onions, 
you can tell by looking at the roots and uh, yeah like I say they clean up really nice these we're just going to leave them leave them in here and, and in the bucket and uh, they'll dry out in no time I could have just left them on the top but let's not tempt fate uh, the, the other onions what are there they're, the red ones are going to take a bit longer in fact they've blown so there's some white onions there though really good so we're going to be lifting them out as well shortly but this bed now is, is clear so I'm going to stick a few more cabbages in here I think buttercup up to mischief good stretch there <laughs> And I'm going to get these into the get these put away, and uh, yeah, good result there with the onions. Stir on and stuck gas, uh, stir on and um, centurion. That's what these onions are. The red ones are turbo, and the ones behind them are snowball. They're not bad. Neither. We'll look at them again, but you know, I just thought I'd come down and lift these onions before someone lifts them for me. So when you when the when they flop over like that, that's it. They're not going to grow anymore. Um, just lift them out, let them dry out, and um, clean them up. Put them in a in a tray, and they'll keep for you know for a very long time if you if you do it right. Um, however, the the ones what the ones what have gone to seed, I would advise you to use them first. Um, because if you don't and you just store them, what will happen is that that central um, stem will rot and what happens when you cut into it you have a, and you open it up, you're going to see um, like a, a brown ring around your onion and that's the dead um, central stem. So what you want to do to avoid that, eat all them first. Um, you probably get about a month before before it's, they start to, to go a bit funky but um, onions like that don't last 10 minutes in my family they all get chopped up and they're all, always cooking onion with something if it's not frying steak and that's what I'm gonna I think I'm gonna have tonight so that's where we uh, we leave the video and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video um, like I said we're under under this um, um, gazebo here <laughs> she's fast asleep so I'm going to sneak off now and uh, go and get some steak for tea and I'll hopefully get this video up a bit later. I did say I might throw um, these coins in at the end so let me, um, if I've got enough time I'm going to stick them in here. Hi guys, well um, I've been, been busy on the car boots and this is what I've been spending my money on. Um, we got three crowns and three half crowns. Um, the three crowns, well we got this... Uh, 1897 we got this 1892 and we got this uh, 1844 hang on I'll just turn it over so that's a young head that's uh, halfway through a rain and that's an old head so yeah, there's 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 the three coins. I haven't got the Gothic one there. However, I've got Gothic coins. I could show you, but I'm just showing you what we've been buying. So, um, like thirty quid. That one was uh, farter, and this one was um, I think it was fifty quid. And uh, these are bargains. These are real bargains. I mean, you could double your you double your money with that one. And then I went and bought myself a Jack the Ripper. Uh, there we go. That's a Jack the Ripper half crown, 1888, uh, paid 30 for that. Then I got myself a Charles II, which is, uh, I've, I've got, um, I've got, I think I've got about 10 of these now. Uh, but uh, it's key, uh, these are dates that I'm after, uh, date runs, and that's uh, 1681, Charles II. And yes, it is £150. And then we got this uh, 1697, uh, it's another half crown. Um, this is a William and Mary now, I bought one of these a couple of weeks ago. And uh, like I say, this is another one um, that I've acquired.
absolutely awesome. I think the best coin of the, the lot at the moment. Um, it's a toss up between the Charles II and um, this Queen Victoria crown because I think I rate this even I rate this more than the uh, the Charles actually. It's absolutely fantastic. Anyway, that's what I've been spending my money on, guys. Next week, I'm sure I'm going to be spending me some more, more money on daft coins. But hey ho, there you go. So, if you've saw them, um, I say they are lovely coins. Uh, I'd say I couldn't resist them. In hindsight, if I ever, knowing that the car was going to break down, I've still took the coins, I would bought the coins anyway because uh, that's what I love. Um, the other thing as well, when I was coming from the uh, the garage, I had to walk back home where I left, I left the car with him and I was going past the post office and I thought, oh, here's a good opportunity to go in the post office and get my fishing licence. So that's what I've done. So now I've got my fishing licence. So I do know there's a few of the lads that I used to go fishing with all the time. Um, if they, they see this video and um, they, they've got a place on, on one of the matches, give me a call and um, pop down and see if I've still got it <laughs> and uh, you might see a video suddenly appeared on fishing um, I say I've been doing it for over 50, 55 years I started when I was, my me, me dad took me when I was five and uh, I've been fishing all, I had a break like I say, just had a break for about a year and a half now, um, not been well so I thought we'd get back into the uh, back into it and um, see if I've still got it. Anyway, like I say, that's where we're going to end the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you all back here for some more next week. Bye for now, folks. It's like that bloody shipwreck cat, all curled up here. Right. Off to get me steak. See you later.